Father, as we come here this morning, we have so much to be grateful for. We think right back to the time when you and God decided it was right to create us and you created us out of love. And we come forward into the time when you died for us and at this time of year we remember this. We remember the gift that you gave so that we, even though we're unworthy, would have a chance because you love us. And then we think forward to the future and at this time of year so many people think that there was something going to go wrong with the world. Um, We we want to thank you so much for the truth that you have given us so we know what's going to happen. We don't know exactly when, but we do know. Heavenly Father, I want to pray that we will be prepared for that time, that we seek a closer relationship with you, that we will know exactly and not worry and not fear because we know the truth. Heavenly Father, I want to pray for all the people here this morning. I want to pray for the ones who haven't made it to be with us this morning. I pray that you be with them for whatever reason. I pray this morning that you be with Gary as he preaches, that you'll be with him and his words, and that we make it a blessing from that. I pray that you be with us once we leave and as we go on about our, um, our week, and we pray that you be with us and that we may be shining examples for you and that you will be in our lives. Amen. Well, good morning. Yep. Good morning, everyone. It's great to be here this morning, isn't it? 
It's been such a busy week and everyone's been busy running around doing all sorts of crazy things. The town has been absolutely gone silly too uh, with the amount of volume of people that's down there. And it's amazing the amount of people who have said to me after I've done a job, look, I'd like to wish you a happy Christmas, but you don't celebrate Christmas, do you? And I mean, as a religious festival, we don't. No, we don't have a special service, but we, uh, we come together as a family. And isn't it amazing how people listen to us? They're always listening to what we've got to say, especially in regards to um, when we're talking about, about the Lord. I'd also like just to take this opportunity too, as Lou's done, to thank um, Aaron for all the work he's done for our, our church here. He's uh, always stepped up to the mark, and uh, on behalf of everyone, Aaron, thank you very much, and we wish you God's blessing down there in the South Island. Remember, it has a winter, it gets cold down there. Uh, it's much warmer up here, and also Christchurch sake, so be careful down there. Well, um, my, I'd like to start my sermon this morning with a, a little story, and it's about Lisa. Um, Lisa, on the day before her wedding, says to Brad, her fiancé, I'm sorry, but I can't marry you. And Brad's mouth drops and goes, what? He says, oh, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't. And she takes off, she takes off. Brad's standing left at the door going, what's going on? I love this woman. And Lisa says, no, I can't. So she takes off up to her room, followed very closely by her mum and dad. They heard the conversation that she had with Brad at the door and says, Lisa, what's going on? You love this man, she said, I do. I love him to bits. And I know he loves me. But, and her mother says, it's his mother, isn't it? She said, yeah. She hates me. She's been trying to get rid of me since, I've been, since our uh, engagement. I just can't marry her. Then her father turns around, into her, around to her and says, Lisa, don't you think Brad's had a pretty rough upbringing and he's only had his mother? Wouldn't it be nice if we could invite Brad into our family and show him what a real family is. Lisa thought about that. She said, look, Mum, she said, all I want is to be happy with Brad and, and that when, when, when our kids come along, that they can have grandparents and you know, they're going to have you and, and I want them to have, a, have a, a lovely grandmother too. And she said, well, just give him a chance. That evening, Lisa falls asleep and when she awakes in the morning, Brad is sitting at the end of her bed. And with tears in her eyes, she says, yeah, I'm going to marry you, Brad. And because uh, that was his, uh, his greatest uh, gift that morning, that uh, she was going to do that. And not long after they'd come back from the honeymoon, Lisa says to Brad, her husband, Brad, we're going to start praying for your mum. Because on the wedding day, she was avoiding her mother, future mother-in-law as much as she could. And even when they drove off on their honeymoon, mum... Brad's mum comes and says, I can't understand why God has taken my son away from you and given him to you. They didn't say anything, they just drove off even Brad. But she says, after the honeymoon, she says to him, uh, Brad, honey, we're going to start praying for your mum every day. We're going to pray for your mum. And they did. Every morning they started to pray for his mum. They started to ring her, ring her once a week. And it became twice a week because she rang also. And slowly they could see a change taking place in Brad's mum. To the extent where Lisa came up with the great idea that let's send her an air ticket. Brad goes, now you are nuts. She said, no, let's give her a chance. Let him, let's invite her and just see how, how we are as a, as a married couple. And she couldn't understand why Lisa and Brad had sent her an airplane ticket. Anyway, she came and thoroughly enjoyed it. And of course the story goes on where they kept on praying and loving and showing kindness towards his mum. Today, after 20 years of marriage, they have three children and two of the most beautiful grandparents they, they could wish. And of course Brad's mum is one of them. So isn't it powerful and isn't it great that Lisa adapted her apps? And I'll come back to that in my story. You know, in three days' time, the world is going to be celebrating Christmas. As it's done every year, it's become an annual event. Whether you're there are Christians or people of other persuasions, Christmas has for most parts of the world become an annual event. And many are aware of its origin. And even for a great percentage of Christian to Christians, why it is even celebrated. 
For a bigger percentage of the world, it's all about a big man with a white beard and a red suit. For so many core believers, 25th of December is the only day they will enter a church. That's sad. That's not good news at all, is it? Christmas, though, is about giving gifts. And uh, like I said before, all of us most probably have been involved uh, some, some stage this week in uh, entering a shop to find that special gift for our loved ones, our children, and so on. And it's amazing, as I went and checked on the net, to see what has been purchased. And it's amazing the amount of electronic devices that have been purchased at this time of year. So far, that Apple have recorded that they, not only them, but the whole electronic um, networking system, that 119 electronic tablets in the forms of iPads and iPhones will be sold by the end of the year. That is amazing. And the, these are one of the, the most uh, gifts purchased at this time of year. But of course, there's gifts for everybody, isn't there? And we spend our time trying to find that. Gifts of all varieties and usages have, uh, have been purchased, wrapped and ready to bring joy and happiness to the receiver. And that's what Christmas is about, isn't it? As I said before, we don't celebrate it as a religious festival, but to give a gift to someone is, uh, is pleasurable. And of course, uh, it's even nice to receive them, so I'll pick up mine at the end of the, end of the sermon. But just in talking about that too, um, you know, we've come to the end of our year and Mary and I just finished uh, doing the food parcels, what we had left over. We, we then uh, sent up to the uh, Salvation Army and they were very thankful for it. But there was another product um, that was left over, not soggy wheat bix or anything like that, that Mary and I have purchased uh, from ADRA, our supplier, and we'll be giving those out at, uh, at the end of the service. So uh, please just... Um, Take those for you and your family. But when you think about Christmas, what's it really about for us as Christians? And the only verse that really came into my mind is John 3.16. The greatest gift is Jesus Christ. The only gift that should be relevant for us is Jesus Christ. And in turning to John 3.16, I know uh, many of you um, know it, and it was great to hear Kylie uh, read it out this morning. Oh, great, good one. You did well there. And it simply says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. He loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten Son. That whosoever, anybody, in other words, that believeth of him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's a promise, isn't it? That's good news so that we will not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So many of us know this verse, John 3.16, but notice what I just said there on the end. Will be saved? Might be saved. So it's conditional. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. James 1, 17. The greatest gift has come from the Father of lights. The shepherds, oh, sorry, the kings saw the light in the eastern sky and they followed it. There is no variation, meaning there is only one God and no other for us to serve. There is no shadow, simply meaning that he doesn't change. He's the same always, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. But there is a part of John 3.16 that most Christians don't take note of. And it's the conditional part to this uh, verse, John 3.16. Because every professed Christian knows John 3.16, and a lot of them like to recite it as if to impress you that they may have a doctor of theology or something like that. But as it stands in verse 16, it lends itself to say to people, once saved, always saved, but of course we know that's not what it's saying. If you just believe on the name of Jesus, no, that's not where it ends. And here, just a couple of verses down in verses 18 is our answer. 
He says, he that believeth on him is not condemned. That makes us safe. We believe in him, so we're not condemned, right? 